The American Society of Fine Arts is an organization dedicated to the presentation of some of the finest living artists. Artists whose works are a reflection of our dynamic American culture. In this edition, we proudly present Mario Grimaldi, his works, his direction, and some of his insights. Some critics have said that I am a fine technician. Some have called me an extraordinary craftsman. And some, after viewing my outer space cityscapes, have claimed that I'm a frustrated architect. Well, I don't know what they mean by those comments, but what I do know is that when I painted like everybody else, I didn't enjoy it. There is a theory that hidden deep within the soul of every man lies a desperate yearning to be born, spark to create. Few of us have been lucky enough to probe these depths, to see this spark bursting into a raging, dynamic energy. We believe Mario Grimaldi is one of the very fortunate few. Sometimes I draw for hours, sometimes days, probing for new ideas and color contrasts. And sometimes I think that in my paintings, I can see that I have almost learned the true value of what I catch glimpse of in my mind, my visions. By his imposing physical appearance, the word artist does not readily spring to mind, rather that of an athlete or vague memories of Roman gladiators. He is a man whose body bears the marks and scars of the war hero, the cruel bruises of city street confrontations. Yes, his streetwise look is unmistakable, uncompromising, determined, stubborn, and direct. It is quite evident that this man is a survivor, a warrior of life whose misfortunes may have been many and yet, whose smile and personal warmth, understanding and compassion can dispel all of the foregoing. He is truly a complex, enigmatic man, and though his experience have still hardened him, nothing has been able to destroy his sensitivity nor his incredible ability to transfer his visions into devastating painted forms. His road to the world of art, predictably, has not been easy. On the contrary, young and eagerly spurred on by the spirit of adventure, he prematurely left high school and the streets of New York to volunteer for service in the United States Navy. Upon leaving the service, his creative urges led to his enrollment in the School of Visual Arts, where he came under the influence and tutelage of Bern Hogarth, the creator and illustrator of the Tarzan comic strips. The new skills and disciplines he was acquiring opened up the world of advertising to him. After a variety of jobs in the field, he finally became senior art director and studio manager for a large Madison Avenue agency. Although this position afforded him many opportunities for designing and illustrating, his urge to paint had not yet been fulfilled. This relentless restlessness ultimately led to his decision to forsake advertising in favor of painting. For the past 20 years, Mario Grimaldi has been the inspiration and driving force behind such organizations as the Suffolk County Artists League and countless local art clubs for the promotion of the arts. He also is currently functioning as the director and organizer for many of the major outdoor art shows throughout the metropolitan New York area. Echoes of his work have led to even European recognition, and in 1981, he toured the continent, winning wide acclaim from critics from Sweden to France. Painting sometimes is second nature to me, but sometimes it's torture. Sometimes I like my results, and I think I have achieved what I set out to do, sometimes. Together, the theme here was unity. You see, in my mind, men and women should be one, interlocked as one. To heighten the image for the viewing, I reversed the light source so his foot could be seen overlapping hers. You can almost reach out and sense his pride as he stands behind his lady, his love. Illusions. Sometimes I find myself staring at this particular painting as it dances and moves upon my retina. The object was to take five ordinary squares and give them their own exciting life while making them defy and laugh at gravity. I think I succeeded. Tomorrow, the universe. Here I attempted painting my universal man in armor, preparing to conquer the unknown universe. But look closer. His eyes are shielded, showing part of the mystery of the quest. 
His companion, a strong steed, stares nervously at the gaping precipice, which could engulf both of them, but both opposed valiantly, ready to face all odds, bravely and adventurously. Dream girl, this one bothers me more than most. I've looked for her everywhere, from the Bronx to Burma. Sometimes she smiles at you from a teeming market crowd or a passing bus, but she's always elusive. You never quite catch up with her. The sad fact is we may all have to be satisfied just capturing the essence of her on canvas. Free at last, the square. Its simplicity defies description and like the perfection of the circle, it's my favorite shape. In this case, I elongated them, making them into shining rectangles to defy gravity. But I wanted the illusion of depth and a kind of feeling of falling. This was achieved by the painting, while the rectangles reach out and fly towards the viewer. Race for Space. When I saw the first adver advertisements for Star Wars, it gave me a chuckle but a kind of exciting satisfaction. I was glad most people were going to share my enthusiasm for dark, mysterious space. In this painting, I had to apply every level of discipline. I became a technician, a scientist, an astronaut. The result was my own incredible journey on canvas. Universal Child, what a concept. Just imagine the clean, clear, honesty of a child seated somewhere in an orderly geometric setting putting the universe in order it was inspired by my feeling of the beginning of things my vision of Genesis shadow of time it's like you were escaping from a forbidden room the symbolic bars the ominous shadows magnifying the situation the relief of flight freedom all embodied in the free-floating, luminous rectangles. Space Landscape. This painting is a very personal expression of the way I would like to feel as a person. What appears to be a very simple rendition of an ordinary scene is in fact, upon closer inspection, a rather difficult application of controlled precision. Gravitation. Everyone needs rewards, success. We grope all our lives and many times end up with little for our efforts. In this painting, I've tried to show that targets, like goals, can be illusions, like floating planets in a circular universe. Reaching the center. There are times when I visualize scenes where the universe becomes a solid mass that suddenly begins splitting open, spewing out newly formed planets. Again, this concept reminds me of birth renewed. Again, Genesis. Gemini Twins. This painting symbolizes the future to me. The coupling of planets at the lower left-hand area the watchful aspect of newly formed male and female figures blending and bordering the mysterious merging of the center. It is a positive painting imbued with hopes for the shadowy future. Who's Frank Stella? It was a challenge that I couldn't resist, taking on one of today's masters. For the keen observer, it speaks of my admiration and respect for a direction in design that is incredibly direct. A burst of light. This was done at the conclusion of one of my dry periods and don't let anybody kid you. Every artist has these periods. All of a sudden I began sketching and the beginning was exciting and I knew I was onto something. The results, even if I say so myself, are irresistible. Pinwheel. 
For years, I've had this illusion of a spinning burst of light, which, strangely enough, was stationary. The impression was a complete contradiction, yet persisted. The process of painting this puzzle took quite a while. But can we, as artists, really capture an illusion? I hope I succeeded. But then again, who knows? Sunburst. This painting should really be called Son of Pinwheel because it was an outgrowth of my trying to capture bursts of energy within the framework of a stationary vehicle. It's pretty tricky, but I love the results, and it has opened other avenues based on my pinwheel illusion. Woman Hope Rider. My ideal of a woman is that sort of quality human being who faces life with honesty, integrity, and without compromise. As illustrated in the painting, there are pitfalls she must overcome. But you can see by her heroic posture that she is aware of them and will ultimately conquer them. Monoliths. Space and source of light was the problem here. Now I could have simply painted in a shiny circle to symbolize a sun or a star as the light source, but that was too obvious, too simple. I preferred the mystery of each rectangle possessing its own inner glowing light source, kind of like the way some people you meet have that shiny quality that lets them stand out in a crowd. Encounter. I debated with myself over this title. I could have called it The Beast and the Precipice, but after much thought, I decided against it. The term beast turned me off. Because after all, this was an intelligent, beautiful, and noble animal who faced the perils of the future with my heroic woman and my universal man. I decided he deserved a much better term than beast. The Red Pusher. Again, that driving energy. Again, that illusion. Or my striving to transfer those images to canvas. It never leaves me. That absolute contradiction bursting energy within a stationary vehicle. Sometimes I get the ridicul ridiculous notion that these energy paintings are really self-portraits. Not in the traditional sense, of course, but what's inside of me, my strength, my direction, my life force. Stallion. I can honestly say that the horse is my favorite animal. In my eyes, he symbolizes all the qualities of nobility and beauty. In my rendering, I am usually overwhelmed with the sheer power of his physique and find myself meticulously molding every muscle and line in a dynamic way. Again, I guess, it's because I love this animal and I am constantly trying to pay tribute to his strength and beauty in my own way. And so, my friends, I have come to believe that in some small way we have been fortunate enough to have been witness to some of the works of one of nature's truly complex and creative beings. For in the short time allotted, we have endeavored to illustrate to you some of the man's strength, restlessness, determination, creativity, and yes, even his pain in his quixotic quest for fulfillment. Some have envisioned man's full and ultimate goal to that of reaching the stars, others to the discovery of incredible life-saving drugs. It is now evident that Mario Grimaldi's goals are much simpler. To paint as no man has ever painted before and to bestow these gifts to future generations so that they may serve as a guiding light to encourage and inspire all future artists. But everything ever said about this man can be summed up in his own words with this simple statement. Every time I try to start a new painting, I sit quietly in my studio, dim the lights, and put on some jazz music. It seems funny trying to tell somebody about it, but it's like I'm sitting by a window watching my own reflection, and I see myself looking for something, searching for something, Something new on the horizon that I don't know where everything is all too familiar. There's not a soul out there 
these are the lonely times. I'm all by myself, nobody else. But for some strange reason, things begin to happen. From where I don't know, it begins. A shape here, a form there, lights, energy. Believe me, I can barely keep up with them sometimes. And it all starts to come together. And a kind of excitement begins to build in the pit of my stomach. Again, it's like a sort of energy. I can feel it flow down my arms, and then it's my cue to start painting. And man, do I start. Even now, as I speak of it, I can feel it flowing down through my brushes to the canvas. My whole studio seems to be filled with it. It's in me. It's part of me, flowing from me. It's everywhere. I guess it's my life. <laughs> 